if you want to talk about planting, um, what we what we recommend is that you go when you wherever you plant a plant, try to uh, just go the depth of the root ball, but go wide. Okay, I used to I, I used to uh, I planted a lot of roses, and I I was always you know informed that you wanted really good drainage. So I was going when I first moved here. I was going uh, and like an extra foot, and I practically killed myself with all the rocks, you know, pulling out all kinds of rocks. And then later on I learned, you know, that's really not the best approach. You don't really need to do that. And the reason why you don't want to go too deep is because it ha tends to want to settle. And when it settles, then all of a sudden this, the, the, uh, the main stem here is going to be, you know, getting too much water. And that can harm your plant, you know. It can, you know, uh, root rot. So if you plant right at the top of that root ball, or even sometimes slightly higher, like half inch, inch higher, um, and then it'll just have a, it'll settle right down right at the top of that root ball. You can always put mulch on it. It's not like it's going to be you know all. You can put you know a layer of two three inches of mulch, and that's no problem. It's all going to break down, and it's going to be well aerated. But the idea is to keep it from settling down too low. Do you have a question? And then, but, but here in Arizona, because our really alkaline, rocky soil, the roots have a tendency to want to go wide, it's kind of like a path of least resistance, rather than deep. So that's why you want to go as wide as you can go, and we recommend about three times the width. Now, on a five-gallon plant like this one, that's still a pretty good hole, size hole. So, but when you, when you start getting, you know, these larger gallon sizes, a big old tree, you know, three times the width is going to be some huge hole. So I would say try to go Try to go twice the width at least, okay, on a really huge gallon size pot. Because uh, if you don't if you don't go very wide, chances are that plant's gonna be stunted, okay? And then another thing that uh, most of you probably know is that whenever you take your, your plant out of the root ball, you want to take those roots and tear off the bottom the root bound roots, okay? Because they're they've been stuck in this pot for a long time and they're kind of getting the message they're not, they can't do anything, so they kind of stop growing at, at the rate that they would uh, that you want them to grow out. So what you do is you just tip you just tear off the bottom. Uh, all those roots are kind of swirling around. If they're not if there's not if they're not real root bound, I would at least nothing else take my glove and just kind of rub the bottom of it and let some of the dirt fall out. And I do the same thing on the side. So you're stimulating those roots and and they're getting the message, okay, hey I can start growing now. So some people even cut off um, like an inch all the way around. There's different techniques. You can take a knife and score the side of it. There's different ways to do it, but it's all achieving the same idea. You're trying to stimulate the roots. If you don't do that, it's a major mistake because then your plants can be stunted, okay? And here's another really good thing to do. Before you plant your plant and you dig your nice wide hole, just dig a hole about that root depth, fill it up with water, and do a little perk test. Find out how deep that thing is going to go. Uh, and just find out how well it's going to drain, is what I'm going to say. If that thing hasn't drained in eight hours, you've got a problem, you know? It's, it should be draining, if, if you have decent drainage, it'll drain within two or three hours. Sometimes it'll drain right in front of your eyes. But, you know, if it's like eight hours or more and still hasn't drained, the best thing to do is find another spot, and then sometimes you only go to, uh, move over five or ten feet, and it's going to be fine. Maybe even less. Or, you can maybe take a digging bar and try to bust through it. It might just be a little layer of clay that's not even that thick. It might only be four or six inches thick. Or it could be some kind of a, you know, a, a large rock or something. So that's a really smart thing to do. So the more you do up front, the very beginning, the more patient you are. And let's say you have, you're, you're paying somebody to do this for you. I would watch them like a hawk. Make sure that they're, make sure that they're getting a wide hole. If they're not getting a wide hole, you're not getting your money's worth. So you, you, it's your job to be out there, kind of uh, being the supervisor. You don't don't just assume they all they uh, they're going to do all this because maybe they're going to take the easy way out and just do some. You know they don't want to kill themselves doing this. You do it at the beginning, the better your plant's going to be. So people always ask, you know, how fast is my plant? How fast is this thing going to grow? I, I a lot of times I'll say that's up that's, that's up to you. You know, if you do a good job at the very beginning, go wide, make sure it's going to drain. Um, and then the, the way you fertilize and the way you water, that's going to that's going to determine. That's going to have a lot to do with how fast your plant grows. You know, of course, some things are going to be faster than others anyway. So anyway, uh, we always like to recommend after you get it. And, uh, our owner here, Ken, always 
likes to, to say if you water your hole first before you plant, that's always a good idea because it's going to minimize stress um, because it acts like a sponge. A lot of times the soil will act like a sponge um, and it'll just kind of uh, dry out your plant, especially let's say you're going to dry, uh, water several or uh, if you're going to plant several plants, it might be a while, a while before you get around to actually watering everything. So if you water your holes first, then they're not going to dry out, okay? And it's always a good idea to water your plant, your plant, the plant itself, that root ball, water that first before you plant it, okay? Because basically what you're trying to do is minimize stress. Because these things tend to go through a little bit of a, a transplant shock, because they've been in this little happy home for quite a while, right? And then, all of a sudden they're getting, now you're putting them to their new, their new place of residence and uh, sometimes they're not too happy about it and they go through a little bit of stress. So that's one reason why after you get your plant planted in, you water it in, you would, uh, there's a couple of different products that we recommend that you use. And one of them is this Root and Grow. It's got triple action. It's got a fertilizer, but more importantly, it's a liquid fertilizer, so it's quick acting. Okay, so it's not gonna last long. You could actually reapply this two or three, four times, five times, with maybe a week or two in between at the early stages. But the, I think the best thing, besides the fact that it helps a transplant shock, um, it's got this root rooting hormone. And it, it, so if you apply this thing several times, you're gonna get your roots off to a really good start. And if you get your roots happy, then your plant your plant's gonna start, you're gonna start seeing more top growth. because. A lot of these uh, trees, especially, they're going to put a lot of their energy into the roots the first two years. So you're not, you won't see a lot of top growth right off the bat. They're, they're working on their roots. So if you use something that's got a root rooting hormone, like this one right here, this root and grow, it's really easy to use. You just mix three and a half tablespoons with a gallon of water. So after you get your plant planted, you water it in, and then you take some of this all-purpose fertilizer, sprinkle the appropriate amount on, which is not much, right on that root ball. And then, you, and then you take a gallon can and you just put just you know, a very small amount, three and a half tablespoons, you know, pour it right on there. That's a great way to get your plant off to a good start, okay? Um, this stuff is all-purpose fertilizer, 744. We, we make this ourselves. Waters, uh, Ken came up with this formula. And one thing I really like about it, it's got, it's, aside from having nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, it's got sulfur in it. It's got sulfur and iron. The sulfur is a really good thing to use because it helps drop the pH. Um, our pH is right around, the water is right around 9 and you know no, neutral is 7, right? So it, once you start getting up past you know 8 or something, that's pretty alkaline. Our, and our soil tends to be uh, somewhere like 8.5, sometimes 9. And then the water that's coming out of the tap is very alkaline as well. And so, in, if you can get the pH lower, the, the, the idea is, is, is that there's a lot of nutri micronutrients that are right there in the soil, but they can't be used by the plant. They're kind of locked up. And as soon as you get the pH down, all of a sudden the plants really perk up. Do you notice, like, after it rains, let's say, let's say you had a lawn, or you're, you're watering your garden a lot in June, and you're watering like crazy, but the plants just don't look that healthy, right? Especially lawns, I notice. And then, and then as soon as it rains, they just, it looks fantastic, right? Well, it's not just the fact that it's getting all this water and it's got nitrogen. I used to think that for years. It was mainly the nitrogen, you know, uh, in the rainwater. It's the fact that it, the pH of the water is so much lower. All of a sudden, all these nutrients that are sitting right there that couldn't be used, then all of a sudden they're being used and the plant just perks up beautifully. So if I have a lawn, I'm one of those crazy people that has a lawn. Because <laughs> they take a lot of water around here. And... Uh, and it's amazing. I get a little, couple of rain, little bitty rainfalls, and they just they look green. It's just like nature's fertilizer. So anyway, if you if you, if you were to use soil sulfur in addition to this on your property, that is a really smart thing to do because you you'll get that pH lower. And most of these plants are not native like the Arizona cypress. You know, most of these plants are not from around here. So there, most of these plants are going to want like a new closer to neutral pH, right? Or some of them even want a little bit slightly acid, you know, like 6.5. So you can see how a 9 pH is really not to their liking, right? So all you do is you give it soil sulfur, just you sprinkle it on top, just like you would a regular fertilizer, and all of a sudden your plants, you're gonna notice the difference with your plants, okay? Here's another product that we 
we like to uh, recommend. It's called Aqua Boost Crystals. Um, these things you can add also at the same time right after you water. And, um, except you actually want to get this into the hole down by the root ball, on the bottom of the root ball um, and um, to the sides of the root ball. And what it does is it, it's, it, it allows you to use way less water. Um, and it also has these mycorrhizal, these, these beneficial fungi that, um, that is going to help the plant in lots of different ways. So, um, so we, we recommend, and then of course I didn't even mention uh, mulch. Right down here is our premium mulch. We, all, we definitely recommend that you amend the soil, um, or um, the hole, rather, um, when you plant your plant to mix in somewhere between a third or less, maybe a quarter of whatever goes back in your hole would be uh, mulch, because that's going to provide better aeration. It's going to loosen things up, and uh, the drainage will be a lot better. Of course, it's going to break down, so that the plant has to get used to the native ground. So that's why you don't want to use too much. Some people get a little bit hog wild and they maybe use 50%. That's probably, I would say that's too much. I'd say use somewhere between a third or a quarter of what's going back in your hole would be the, the mulch. You want, also want to make sure you mix it in well because roots tend to not like going through different soil mediums. So you wouldn't want to like layer it. They, they, they want to get, it should be nice and mixed and then the roots will, will flow a little bit more freer, okay? So those are some little thoughts about planting. When um, I take all the rocks out of this. Yeah, I didn't mention hole, that. There are, there's not much native soil left. You know, there's so many rocks, and then you're left with this little pile. So pretty much you need to put in, you know, more. Well, yeah. Okay, so the, the, the comment was, uh, there's so many rocks in the soil, by the time you end up taking rocks out, there's not a whole lot of native soil left. I've, I've noticed that problem too. We recommend, uh, you know, taking out rocks about golf ball size or larger out. Um, and if you've got some, you know, some, some good sized rocks in there, all of a sudden you're noticing, hey, there's not a whole lot. So what I've done is I went somewhere else in my yard and got some native soil and brought it in. Because I still want to keep that same ratio. I don't want to get too much um, mulch because you're, it's all going to break down. It only takes about a year and it's, it's gone, you know. Um, so I would, I would, if that was the case, I would just go get some soil somewhere else in your yard, you know? You know, just a couple of shovelfuls here would probably do the trick, you know? 